Hello everyone, welcome to the world of Lean Six Sigma. In today's video, we are going to learn how to collect and analyze sample data. I have been mentoring projects for last 20 years and I see this as one of the areas where people like black belts and green belts can improve. They really don't know how to collect and analyze data from a sample. So let's begin today's video. In today's video, we are going to talk about a case in which a patient enters the hospital and the patient meets the doctor. The hospital has decided to reduce the patient wait time at the hospital. So the goal statement of this project is that hospital wants to reduce the patient wait time before they meet the doctor. And some of the data has been collected in the Excel sheet. Let's first look at it how it has to be collected and then how it has to be analyzed. A blank sheet was given to data collection team. They had to take data from 15 patients and they started picking the samples from 8.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. The five cases that they had picked and then from 10.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. and then from 12.30 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. So these patients when they entered in the hospital their time was noted. So the first patient entered in the hospital at 8.30. Then the patient goes to the registration counter. So the patient took two minutes to reach there. So it is 8.32. Then the patient stand in the queue and get the card. So it is till 8.45 he get this activity done. And then the patient goes to the doctor's assistant and submit the card in the next two minutes which is 8.47. Patient then meets the doctor at 9.14. If you look at the column G4, G4 is the difference between F4 and B4, which is 9.14 minus 8.30, which is 44 minutes. So this patient has taken 44 minutes before the patient could meet the doctor. Likewise, the data was collected for all these 15 patients and then Average time can be calculated. The average wait time is 41 minutes. Now, when the team has collected this data and they formed a goal statement, for example, they want to reduce these 41 minutes to maybe 20 minutes. How will they do that? They will have to go and see where is the maximum wait time which is happening between these process steps. So let's take down the average of each of these process steps. So the next thing that the team has to do is to figure out the difference between the time taken at each of these process steps. For example, time taken between process step number C and process step number B. So two minutes. And then if we calculate the average, Average is 3 minutes. It means that between the first and the second step when the patient enters the hospital and when the patient goes to the registration counter, it takes 3 average minutes for him to reach that counter. The next is what is the time that the patient has spent when he joined that queue versus when he got the card. For this activity, we will have to do the subtraction of time between getting the card and entering the queue, which is column E and column C in this case. And now you can again do the average of this particular column. So average time is 11 minutes. The next data that the team is interested in is when the patient got the card and when the card was submitted at the assistance desk. So for this, so for this column G and column E will be used. So column E will be subtracted from column G. We'll repeat the same process. We will calculate the average here. Average five minutes. This means that the person could have taken 5 minutes to submit the card to the assistance desk. It could be the person is not aware of where the room is or 
the registration is happening very far off place from the doctor's sitting area. So in the last step, we really want to understand how much time was spent by the patients before they meet the doctor. So we will repeat the same process. This is the time when the patient meets the doctor and this is the time when they have submitted their card. So overall, this time, column I4 minus column G4 will give us this time. So 27 minutes is the time that was spent by patient 1 after submitting his card to doctor's assistance and the person has to wait for 27 minutes before he can meet or she can meet the doctor. Let's see what's the average here for these 15 patients. So average is 20 minutes. So overall if I divide these 41 minutes, it will be divided into these times. 3 minutes is to reach the registration counter. And then next 11 minutes is to stand in the queue to get the card. And then again next 5 minutes they will search the doctor's room and they will submit the card to doctor's assistant. And then finally they will spend another 20 minutes before they meet the doctor. So this is the overall breakup of this 41 minutes. So when the team has collected this data, they can put this data in the VSM. They can use this data to analyze uh, some statistical tools. Though this data is less when I am showing 15 cases only, this data could be equivalent to the statistical sample size that the team has to use. In my last video, I have explained how to identify a statistically validated sample for your project. If you want to understand how the sampling is to be done, so please refer to my sampling videos. So friends, I hope this video is helpful and you understood how to collect and analyze sample size data with the help of this video. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. I'll see you in my next upcoming video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. Friends, you can buy my authored books on Amazon. My first book is 8 Steps to Problem Solving, which talks about Six Sigma concepts. And my second book is Continuous Improvement, The Lean Way which talks about the lean concepts.